There was thought that went into things. A rap style was 16 lines as a verse, not six and then the chorus. It was three <laughs> sixteens, three choruses, maybe even a bridge, an introduction, and some straight flowing. A song took up three pages of paper in your school notebook. Nowadays, a, 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 a song takes up a half a sheet of paper. And as long as you know how to move a certain way and wear everybody's jewelry on your block, the label will market you because you know what? That is another means for black America to stay behind. So I do have a problem with that part of it. And I think that's my biggest part. You know, as people, I think we still, we're not reading between the lines of a lot of things. I think money makes a matter, but it don't make a man. I think that for anything that you do, you have to at least turn around and even within yourself and say, if I'm going to open up my mouth, at least let myself know how to speak. Let me understand some things. If I'm not a good speaker, let me at least turn around and read so I can understand with a third eye when somebody's coming at me different. Because right now we're living life in a time that if you live to, listen to the news, you're probably going to die. We're living in a common sense time right now. And, um, you know, like I say, I'll take it back again to I really respect, though, again, the young people and the fight that they're putting up um, for, for civil rights and all over the world, man. You know, this is equivalent to apartheid. This is equivalent to that fight. This is really the first right. thing that all countries of everywhere turned around and put their hands down and said, you know what? We're not dealing with this no more. And the people are taking over. It's like the fight for apartheid. This is big. And the young people are leading this movement, and they're very, very impressive. So, um, you know, like I said, we have to, with that being said, this new generation is very smart. And a lot of them will figure out that Black, um, so white America or, or any race of America, if you're not about equality and if you're not going to turn around and, you know, you're not going to turn around and do something to try to educate us or you're still going to do things to try to poison us as a race or races, because, again, as I stated, Spanish and Latino descendant is no different than black. We live the same way. Friends growing up. That's how we knew it, at least in Long Island. That's what we do. Blacks and Latin people are no different. We eat the same food. We chill out. Black people go to bodegas. I mean, hell. When you look at, like, what's going on, the the bus stop dances, the, uh, the Spanish people's webo, and the black people's bus stop. So, yeah, we got a lot that never went away. <laughs> but, um... Again, like I say, man, not to, you know, stay on the topic, but again, it's a it's a certain pride, again, that I feel as a person that I don't feel like the younger generation is going to allow these corporations and stuff to turn around and take advantage of black folks anymore. So I think with all of the stuff going on, as as minority people, you know, we have a very, very good opportunity to to see the support that we can have from each other. And it's just up to us to turn around and know that we're worth more know that we want more and conduct ourselves uh, conduct ourselves better. And, um, you know, we, we're getting there. Again, big shouts to the young people. Very, very impressive fight. And all the young people marching through Long Island. I've seen y'all marching all through Merrick and everything else like that. And I, I, will, I will touch on that very briefly. My generation, when we were growing up, a big date after the prom or something was taking a girl to the to the Sizzlers to get a little nine ninety nine steak and all you can eat popcorn shrimp, that was big to us. You know, when we turned around and we were going on a prom date or we were going anywhere else, in the places like Massapequa, Long Island, and Sunrise, Long Island, going to these little restaurants to impress our little dates and spending money and going to the Busy Bee 
flea market in Massapequa and places like that, making them rich on coats and everything like that. These are black people come from the urban neighborhoods, bigging up your places, sitting up there, spending all money in your hoods and letting your hoods build up. For as a result of it, 40 years later, you don't want our children marching through your neighborhoods. So I do commend the young people and I encourage them to continue shutting it down. Because I do personally believe the only how you're going to stop something is to get up in their pocket financially. We, the minority people, and, 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 and some of the people in Long Island and, and, and these places that I grew up in, we made some of these places that don't want us, where we can't even go buy a house, successful. You did not not take our money when we was pulling up after the prom in the limousine. You did not. Now our kids want to walk through your neighborhood to turn around and say the way you think it ain't right. And you want to get out there tasteless and classless. And again, I watch these publications through Long Island. I'm not the Long Island representative for nothing. I see what's going on in Long Island. But people of Long Island, you know what? For every place that don't want to turn around and show us our respect, y'all turn around and young people, I say again, and, and older people and everybody, I encourage y'all to continue to fight. You know, they fighting hard down here in Atlanta, too. You know, things is, you know, out of control here in Atlanta and, and, and very questionable in some areas and stuff like that. But, you know, I continue, I, I encourage y'all to continue to fight, man, because, again, this is, um, this is where we are, Long Island. We made these places, and I'm not going to say it over and over. But these are the places that we went to spend our money when we wanted to have a good time. And as a result of it, you are looking at these same places that don't want a black person there 40 years later because they made it well on our money. Shut it down. Long Island is not a place about, oh, what has what and stuff. It's, it's the spirit and the pride. It's one of the reasons why, you know, I love my alma mater, you know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, for all my central Iceland musketeers, we all realize that no matter what, there's a certain amount of pride that comes with that shit. That's straight up and down. The days of walking through central Iceland high school, walking to the cafeteria, meeting everybody and waiting my turn to freestyle while somebody like my one of my homeboys, big shout out, my man, um, Derek Green, beat the drums on the table, you know, hit the table, and everybody get their turn to freestyle. You know, these are the days that made us, man. Like, you know what? Our life had more excitement than the movie Grease. <laughs> when the last day of school came and graduation time came, we was in there. We was there. Central Iceland people, shout out. Big up. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Brentwood people know what I'm talking about. There's a certain amount of love and a camaraderie and a proudness. A proudness. You go to wherever pretty place you want to live in this world. And if you come from Long Island, you try to let people know you come from Long Island. You know? We live a certain, up. We live a certain kind of people. And um, again, that's why you see so much expression and identity coming out of Long Island from the different groups. And so, you know, when you listen to the groups and everybody has their own style or their own way, but it's so polished, that lets you know that Long Island is filled with diversity. Diversity. You know, we're out there living, you know. And um, again, being different out there is a part of our culture, you know. Shout out to other CI groups and so, you know, shout out to like um the chameleons, you know. I know cats that from my neighborhood that made records and stuff, you know. My man Vernon and Corey and Jeff. They made records too, the chameleons. You know. CI was a place that label started looking for. Not so much CI, but Long Island was a place where after a while the label started looking out there for talent. You know, it was it was a lot that came with it. You know, too much to really talk about and get into. 
But we 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 as Long Island people as groups, three out of five groups that came out of Long Island never even had to turn around and look for no no label deal because some some label was looking for them. Heard them hot, you know, or you know, some kind of situation. But again, everything that came out of Long Island, think about it, had a different kind of style. When Public Enemy came out, they were sitting right there in Hempstead, Long Island. The world had never hip hop wise seen such a political stance. It was ridiculous. And they came out in the beginning so wicked and different sounding. You know, we had the X plan and different stuff like that, but Public Enemy buttered the cake. They was raw. Chuck was raw. Flavor was like, yo, he was basically yelling at you, telling you like, yo, the government is a lie. That group was like, it was crazy. And the thing is, is like, when you're young and you're in the car, we used to get in the car on purpose. Everybody around Long Island, if you were gonna run into somebody at a gas station or anywhere, you could run into them around the time that the Rap Attack show was gonna come on the radio. Cause that's the time you got dressed to go hanging out and chilling and stuff. And you know, we rode around, had the cars going and stuff. And you know, you just listening to the songs coming on the radio. I remember the first time that um, Biz Marquis and TJ Swan came on the radio with Make the Music With Your Mouth, Biz. And it was like, oh, wow, that's TJ Swan that lives around the corner. That's Biz Marquis that I seen running back and forth to trying to get on the mic with certain crews when he was younger. And he was, he was a beatbox that I first seen just like a Dougie Fresh. He's good at what he does. Fought to get in. By the time Biz got in and Biz start to drop his style, Biz joints was raw. TJ Swan was raw. You know, he was he was a little singer back in the day. So I mean, you know, to me he was like, you know, the first like I'll be sure type. You know, you start dropping it with Biz, you know, but these are people that you know you've seen from the neighborhood now, and you're sitting up there like, you know, as a kid, like, wow, and they got a deal. And the only thing you could imagine for, you know, is your spot on the radio. And, you know, you, you start to realize, like, you know what, you're working towards it. But it happens, and, again, when it happens, or, or any time it has happened for a group from Long Island, that group has sounded different. And as time went on, like I say again, people have started coming out there looking for us. You know, we are prideful people because, you know, the thing is, is that we deserve to be prideful. You know, we work hard. Our parents work hard. The average... Long Island family is working on their American dream just like everybody else. But it's, right. a, it's, not, it's not the, we never grew up based on envy and the things that your neighbor had or your friend had or anything like that. As Long Island kids, you know what I'm saying? We were sharing people. We, we really genuinely had a really good time. Like we had, we had some, again, we had some of the best house parties. And, um, like I say, wish I could take it back to those days, but, you know, you can't. Absolutely. Well, I want to thank you, B-Love, for joining me. I couldn't think of a better way to spend my 50th episode. I want to thank you for everything you've done for the culture. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you. No doubt. Thank you for being a wonderful human being. Uh, can you tell us what you have coming up in the future, and will that third album ever see the light of day? Ah, that third album, truthfully, has seen the light of day in a rare vinyl deal through Chop Herring Records um, in France. Uh, it came out as a two-part EP. Um, it, it did come out. Um, it was sold again by the Chop Herring Records label. You can go onto Google and you can actually, uh, sorry, you can go onto YouTube and put in the Chop Herring and you can actually hear, I think, some of the songs or you can hear some of the clips on them and stuff. But I mean, if anybody wants to turn around and, like, you know, do a little deal with me on some released stuff or unreleased, then, I mean, you know, you, you, you shout me out and, you know, we'll see what we can turn around and do. I'm more than happy to work any way to get my stuff to the public to go ahead and enjoy. Um, but, again, you know, I'm not going to pimp my stuff, you know, and the appreciation for hip-hop, I'm not going to oversaturate myself and... um but I'll give the people what they what they gladly want if somebody wants to reach out, if they have the means and the platform. But, you know, I want to say again, man, I, 
really thank you and appreciate you for allowing me to come on and represent your 50th and um, love and respect. Appreciate you. Big shout out to iDoy78 for uh, hitting me up and uh, telling me to reach out to you. A lot of people been oh, is it screen freezing up. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? This has been episode 50. I want to thank everybody for joining me. That was a heck of a history lesson. Hopefully you learned something that you didn't. Tomorrow I will have Extra Prolific on, formerly of the Hieroglyphic Crew, and a lot more great guests coming up this week. Thank you for everybody who logged on and joined me late tonight. I will see you again tomorrow. This is The Journalist Sincere. This has been episode 50. Special shout out again to iDoy78 for uh, giving me the heads up uh, to link up with B-Love. Thanks, B-Love, for everything. And thank you all. I'll see you again tomorrow night. Salute.